Well, good afternoon and welcome everybody. Uh, first, thank you all for coming to this briefing today. Uh, this is another in a series of steps that we hope to bring a very difficult topic out into the open, out from behind the shadows where we don't talk about it and unfortunately further contribute to the stigmatization of suicide and self-harm. We have a, a really, uh, on, we're honored to have a, an incredible group of people to speak today about the problems of suicide and self-harm among our youth. Um, and I want to introduce uh, everybody uh, as we go along. I'm Dr. Alan Frizzetti. Uh, I just want to start with a few facts about uh, youth suicide and self-injury. Uh, it may surprise you to know that about 17% of high school students seriously considered attempting suicide in the previous 12 months. 17%, you think about that, that's, you, if, you, if you know anybody in high school, they know somebody who's been seriously thinking about suicide. Um, about 13.5% of students actually made a plan to kill themselves. 8% attempted suicide at least once. 8%, almost one out of every 12 youth in our country made some attempt to kill himself or herself in the last year. About almost 3% made a suicide attempt that was serious enough that it required medical attention. And suicide is now the second leading cause of death, both for those 15 to 34 years old and for those who are 10 to 14 years of old, years old. And com although completed suicides are a small fraction of the attempts, these rates are increasing. In addition to suicide itself, um, we have an, an epidemiological crisis around non-suicidal self-injury or self-harm without, without the intent to die. Um, somewhere between 35 and 40% of youth engage in non-suicidal self-injury during their, their uh, adolescence, 35 to 40%. Non-suicidal self-injury actually increases the risk for suicide about tenfold. And uh, this current rate of between one-third and 40% of youth engaging in non-suicidal self-injury is perhaps a tenfold increase in the last 25 years. 25 years ago, non-suicidal self-harm was a fairly rare occurrence, perhaps only two to 3% or 4%. We don't have great numbers, and now we're in the 35 to 40% range. What we know is that suicide and self-harm are trans-diagnostic, meaning that no one or even small set of diagnoses can tell us who's gonna attempt suicide or who's going to engage in self-harm. Many people, who attempt suicide, many youth who attempt suicide, and many youth who engage in non-suicidal self-harm actually don't meet the criteria for any psychiatric disorder whatsoever. Stigma around suicide and self-harm is both a cause and a consequence of suicidality. Stigma promotes people hiding, being quiet, staying in the shadows, and of course staying in the shadows and hiding prevents people from getting the help that they need and keeps a shroud of mystery around us. 